We are having an informal roundtable discussion. Uh, it is now 4.02 p.m. We'd like to discuss Bill 226-34, which is an act to amend subsection A15, a subsection 12.802 of Article 8 of Chapter 12, Title 10 Guam Code annotated to add a subsection 12.802 A16 to Article 8 of Chapter 12, Title 10 Guam Code annotated, and to relative to establishing certification and licensure requirements for the massage therapy industry on Guam under the oversight of the Allied Health Board. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for attending. Uh, this is a very informal discussion. Please feel free to, to say whatever it is that you need to say. Uh, we have had a public, public hearing on this bill and we did put this bill on the session floor. However, um, there were some concerns uh, with some of the industries that uh, they felt um, perhaps was not uh, such a fair uh, requirement uh, for some of the certifications. And also some of the concerns by my colleagues were um, that the exam were examination requirements, the length is too short, and um, also, the institute to provide certification for the certifications is not available on Guam. We'd also like to look at possibly limiting the hours of uh, the, the operations for the massage industry to perhaps 10 p.m. at night. And some of the argument towards that is that we are very well aware that there are illicit massage parlors um, that are operating on Guam. Now to receive a masseuse certification, all you simply need is a health certificate which requires you to get an STD check every six months. And so this also, really the root of this bill is really trying to target human trafficking. And we've had several cases on Guam where human trafficking has been brought out in the news and and some were persecuted. Uh, and also the, the concern of what it does also towards the tourism in our island. Uh, and also I do want to add that we do want to ensure that the legitimate businesses are well protected within this bill. And so that's why I've called uh, representatives from the industry, representatives from the Allied Health Board to come forward and perhaps give their take on the bill and to see where we can move forward and, and some kind of level playing ground because we do need to have a massage certification requirement on Guam. We have to do away with the practice of just receiving a health certificate and requiring a, a STD check every six months. It does not resolve the human trafficking that goes on under in our island. It does not resolve the illicit massage. So I'm asking for the hotel and restaurant industry to perhaps uh, share their expertise in this matter and how we can improve this bill or create a different bill that will allow masseuse certification to be legitimate and so that we can deter and get away with get away from the illicit massage practices that are happening on our island and there are many there are many massage parlors that are illicit but there's no way uh, the government is short on resources to inspect these agents these these businesses, the government is short on resources to ensure that the facilities are clean for those establishments and to also see what kind of dealings that are going on within these illicit parlors. Uh, just an example is we had uh, DRT come in several times and I've asked them how in, when you go and inspect or uh, enforce code, how, how often do you ex inspect the massage parlors? And one of their statement, statements were, oh, we, it's hard to even inspect them annually. Sometimes they go for years unchecked, uninspected. And so really we need to come together as a community and acknowledge that there is illicit massage practices going on, which also presents an avenue for human trafficking here on our island. And we, I understand that we all want to be good community stewards. And so I'm asking members of the community to perhaps share their expertise, their knowledge and experience, so that we can really target human trafficking on Guam and these illicit massage parlors. 
and to better ensure that the legitimate uh, massage industry is acknowledged and that there are requirements to do so. Nationally, there are requirements to be a, ther a massage therapist or a, a masseuse. And so I'm looking forward to hearing what uh, ideas you have to propose and also hearing your input on how we can really enforce this problem that is staining our community and hurting people that are being trafficked here uh, and also imploring you to work together so we can no longer turn a blind eye to the illicit massage parlors. Okay, um, and so I asked um, Mimi Balahaja to, to come forward today and uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, U.S. Attorney General, former U.S. Attorney General, Alicia Limtiaco, President of the Guam Hotel and Restaurant, uh, Mary Rhodes, and so uh, maybe perhaps we can just go along the line and, and introduce yourself and if you have any input to the bill. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Asuka from Hilton and Nico Hotel. I'm a technical manager. And, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Yuta Hasegawa from the same spa as her. We operate a spa in Nikko Hotel and also Hilton Hotel. Hi, I'm Kumi. We are together uh, from Nikko and Hilton Spa. Oh. Hi, my name is Shuhei Kroishi, a uh, representative of uh, PHL Ken Macronshare. I'm also doing the general manager for these two spas and at the same time uh, doing uh, owner representative for hotels. And of course, uh, we're doing to working together with the Sheraton. She will uh, introduce herself. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Pushani Shu. I'm a spa manager from Angsana Spa Sheraton Hotel. I'm Sibyl Chrysostomo. I'm uh, um, appointed member to the Guam Board of Allied Health representing speech. Mimi Balahaja, I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, but I'm currently a member of the Guam Board of Allied Health Examiners. Mm -hmm. My name is Milton Marinaga. I represent the uh, Guam Business Bureau Chairman of the Board. Thank you. Half a day. Um, my name is Mary Rhodes. I'm the president for the Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association. Uh, good afternoon, Alicia Limtiaco, a uh, former Attorney General and former U.S. Attorney for Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Philip Guerrero. I'm with the Guam Community College. Nice to meet you all. Hi, I'm Michelle, and I'm the intern for Senator Nelson's office. And I'm Senator Nelson. I, I wanted to also recognize that we did reach out to other uh, vocational schools. Uh, we invited uh, GCC also because we understand that there is a need for a curriculum, right? And so uh, I'd like to thank GCC for coming and hopefully we can start something uh, to support certification. Okay. Perhaps someone would like to speak openly about the bill. Um, I know we had several discussions uh, offline and also during the public hearing. Um, is there anyone that would like to start? No? Okay, let me, let me just introduce uh, some of the measures of the bill. So basically this bill is, is addressing the uh, qualifications for licensure, a grandfather period for licensure, qualifications for certification, grandfather period for licensure, Violation, suspension, revocation, and other penalties, exemptions, exceptions of certification and licensure, previous licensees, and severability. So, is there anyone? Is there anyone that would like to speak on the qualifications and the certifications required? Yes, Miss Sybil. Eighteen years of age. That seems rather young to me, but. Um, how did we arrive at that? 
uh, six. You must be at least 18 years of age. Okay, this, is, this addresses the qualifications for licensure. Any person desiring to practice as a massage therapist in Guam shall ap apply to the board as set forth in this article. Applicants shall be at least 18 years of age, have received a passing grade on the Federation of State Massage Therapy Boards, the SF S FSMTB, Massage and Body Work Licensing Exam, MBLEX. As this was with the understanding that they have graduated from high school and this is a career that they wanted to pursue. Okay, so actually so we, 18 years means they've graduated. They've have, they yes. have to show a, a high school diploma right, with as a qualification. Okay. Yes. Thank you. First, let me say that um, as a um, regulator on the Allied Health Board for many, since 2005, I think that um, um, regulations is very important because it means in all the codes of all the L um, examiner's office is to protect the public. And I think that foremost, we need to understand that. Why do we have boards to regulate and give licensing or certification, and that is to protect the public. The, the practice of massage parlor, I mean massage therapy, I think has been in the books for many years and we have worked on it, especially with uh, Ms. Lim Tiako for years ago. Um, while we're on Guam, we need to follow also the, the, um, the standards of the national board. We cannot have just any kind of uh, regulation coming up. We need to follow the standard. The standard we need to follow is a U.S. established standard because we're in the U.S. territory. And that standard has to be uniform and follow the same as the United States. Because currently every state do uh, license massage therapy. We're looking at the, the title massage therapy as a therapeutic um, practice, a therapeutic um, situation, a therapeutic dispense uh, into the person to gain a benefit of uh, feeling better. So it is antithesis to human trafficking, antithesis to anything that's uh, just for the business purpose. And I know that this is a big industry on Guam without regulation. And let me bring it to the bill because I reread it again. It's a little bit different from previous. And that is requiring the Guam Board of Allied Health Examiners to also regulate the facility. Current, is that correct? No, I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Dr. Valhaja. This one right here is with the unmarked changes, and so we are discussing that one. Okay, so this the, new the one yes, that you this have. This is the current one that is already presented. The, in the one public. you gave me last that week is, is not. That was a new proposal. Yeah, yes. well, okay. So, so I haven't read it, but just let me say this is that we don't have the capability and the ability to uh, inspect and regulate facility, and that should be the Division of Environmental, Environmental Health and Division of Public, uh, Department of Public Health, right? They should do that. The purpose of examiners is to provide, to make sure people are qualified, following standards, and that they pass a certain exam that pose them to be qualified to provide the service that they're supposed to do. Um, so we, the board of examiners, all the boards, they regulate um, the licensing of a person and then also, this, uh, also there are regulations concerning about their codes of behavior and how they're about dispensing their particular therapeutic um, uh, to providing services to people, right? So um, let me just say this is that uh, I'm not sure that the current board of examiners, that Ally Health Board, is too keen about accepting another, um, another profession 
uh, discipline into the board because currently we have 15 and I think I publicly have said that. I personally, this is not a personal view, it is the board looking at from general the members. Personally, I think that if it requires extra work, you know, I don't mind to be doing that because I'm already familiar with regulatory um, So I think that, um, I don't know how that's going to be with, I, I have not read the current one, whether any um, resources is provided because currently, even now, the board actually needs examiners. We need to have inspectors. We need to have um, uh, inspectors and who are the people, inspect and, and investigators. And we need um, legal resources like attorney to do that. Uh, I know that Article 8 under the Allied Health examiners required the Attorney General to provide the services, but then again, it depends on the, the Attorney General whether they are able to do that. Um, so this is the reason why right now the Allied Health Board examiners having a hard time uh, regulating uh, people who are not following the rules and regulations and, um, and basically based on complaints we received. We've not been able to perform our duties into disciplining people is because we don't have those resources. So that requires a discipline. Actually, regulatory means discipline if they're you know, performing out of their prescribed uh, services, right? So. Thank, thank you, thank Dr. You. Balaja. So just, but to be clear, um, minus the piece of the massage facility requirements, uh, just specifically for massage certification um, and licenses, would the Allied Health Board be willing to uh, oversee this until we are able to establish a separate board like they have for cos cosmetology? Uh, uh, I think the ideal situation is to have an independent board um, people who are licensed as a massage therapist to, to regulate, because um, right now we don't have those individuals, but I know for a fact on Guam there are people that have been licensed from the state side, uh, states, you know, like Florida, I don't know who else, that I know for a fact that they could serve on the board if they are. I, I think that uh, the way to go is to have an independent board because I foresee this board is going to be heavily, it's going to be a lot of work initially, you know, <laughs> to, to be able to go out and, 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 you know, come up with all the, the forms uh, for people to come in and, and uh, then obtain the license. And I'm not sure that, that we want to open up to everybody who's practicing already to be grandfathered because you want also to have those people who are grandfathered to have the prescribe, they have the, um, the education and also the, the education and the uh, training already in hand to be able to do that. Because if I were to come here, let's say from China, you know, uh, I have a contract for 10 months, I don't know what's, you know, their education cannot be comparable to the U.S. standards. So, Regulating for them to be grandfather, I think that's far-fetched. That might as well don't have them grand, do not have them to be regulated. I think it's high time that we get our own people to be in this industry. I would like to see that our very own people to go to school and get the education and the training they need to be able to practice this. And I'm happy to see that GCC is here because um, they have the capability to do that. Uh, to be able to go open a school. Another part I don't understand is, that, is the language. Because if you talk to somebody who doesn't understand English, by the way, on the Article 8 of the Guam Ally Health Practice Act, it says that you have to understand English. You know, you are, have to be able to talk to the individual who is your client, and for us as our patients, the client you know, able to converse and be able to understand what you're talking about. Um, I'm not sure that able to procure somebody, you know, uh, from Asian countries or somebody 
you know, who doesn't speak English, it's a good practice. Mary Rhodes. Thank you, Dr. Valadio. Um, just a couple of things in response to um, that. And well, first of all, I would really like to uh, thank and recognize uh, Sandra Nelson, you and your team, because I had spoke to the staff uh, a couple weeks ago, and I know it's off island, and I really wanted to make sure that we didn't just have another public hearing, um, that we really got together as a roundtable discussion. Uh, because that hasn't happened yet. And when this was introduced on the floor, that was something I asked back in February. So I really appreciate you pulling everybody together, at least some of the stakeholders, because this is really where we should start always, rather than just a bill introduced on the floor. But I think we have to be very mindful to separate two issues. I think number one, um, we need to separate the illegal acts first and foremost, because I think that there are already laws on the books, and I said that during my testimony. There are laws on the books for that, and it's a matter of enforcement. And even though um, you're stating that, you're, you're stating two things. One is that we don't have enough resources to enforce, although there has been a very uh, active team um, together with ICE and with the AG's office and, and ongoing for so many years where they do go after uh, different kinds of business entities, not just uh, the massage parlors, but different entities. Uh, it is a task force that looks for uh, one, illegal workers, um, and then they detain them and return them back to the country, and then also for illegal acts. And um, that is a little different, different, difficult to prove because you have to really catch them, but there are ways to uh, still identify uh, through their work visas and if they don't have that through their tourist visa and so you can really separate the whole human trafficking and prostitution separately and I understand that that's the intent of the bill and I think it's important um, that we work on that I've worked with uh, you know Alicia in the past on these issues and there have been task force and I know that there are things out there to help get the community involved to uh, really support uh, reporting this and getting enforcement. But we really can't put a black eye on the industry um, because there are a lot of good businesses out there and there is a huge difference. And I re would really appreciate this if we are gonna work together that we stop using the word massage parlors because that is only one type of business. And especially within GHRA's membership, you don't find massage parlors in our membership. We have spas. Um, and we have, uh, you know, massage businesses in massage. They're not massage parlors. There is a negative connotation every time you state that. Um, and so I think we need to be mindful of that. And then the second thing is certification. And I'm excited that GCC is here uh, because that was a missing piece in uh, during the hearing was that we didn't have an educational institute. We only had one uh, entity really teaching spa and that's another thing is um, you have to be when you're writing legislation like this especially such large changes to what's already been such a long-lasting industry you have to look at where what we're starting with what is the what are the basics the basic today is a health certificate right that's it that's all you need is a health certificate and uh, paperwork to say you can work, whether a U.S. or a work visa to be here on Guam. And so you have to start somewhere. And starting somewhere is not introducing CMT and LMT through U.S. national standards. We need to work up towards that. And I think that's why uh, you had such a huge um, pushback during the, the public hearing is because this is such a huge radical change and you will really kill the industry for several years. And even to state that somebody is 18 years old, they're not gonna be qualified at 18 because they have to go to school and get their certification, right? Unless we teach this in the vocational schools, um, like what GCC has in the high schools. But even then, we don't have people with all those qualified hours to be able to graduate with a high school diploma, even in the, um, in the programs that they have today. So it's still a very aggressive plan. I know, know you're trying to find something more reasonable to work with, and I I'm, and I'm hope that that's something we can accomplish today. Um, so what do you propose? What, what are some of the 
You, you've mentioned um, some of the challenges that we've had along the way. So what do you propose uh, that would help with certification and licensing? Well, I think, well, not just certification. I want to go back to the illegal acts. I think that you need to really look at a bill that has more teeth than what is in today. Um, if all that's required is a health certificate and a work visa, I think you need to look at something where um, we've done this through various bills. Um, there was one introduced in 2011, and I actually worked with uh, Mamie and, and Alicia with the Allied Health Board to try to introduce this. And this document back in 2007, it was Bill 351-31. And it had, it's more robust. It has a lot, and I referenced this in our, my public hearing testimony. It has a lot more in here that should be uh, included in your bill. Um, but with regards to the illegal acts, I think that um, some things that I've recommended to you before is that we should really look at limiting the number of licenses um, to those types of establishments, similar to how we uh, handle the alcohol beverage control. So um, the number of licenses? It's uh, number of licenses out. and okay. the types of businesses. Okay. So like spas and hotels, obviously okay. they're a higher standard than the others. Um, so you shouldn't, uh, you know, we should look at those kinds of entities so as well is, as other spas that are outside of hotels. What is the standard for the hotel spas? Well, they still have um, the health certificate. Okay, and well, there, there's require? a lot more training. Um, a lot yeah. of this, those employees have gone through even Mandara Spas training, or there have been other trainers that come to the island, and they actually, um, you know, it's the same way we go through other certifications, and that's like okay. all on record with the HR department. So how, how many hours is required for, you mentioned? Well, they all vary because it's all dependent on the brand. So, so we can give Mandara you Spa? some ideas. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mandara is no longer on Guam, but I know that um, Therese Kaspabauer, when she was here, mm -hmm. uh, she used to, um, actually, sorry, Therese Sakazaki used to run Mandara Spa a long time. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we have a lot of the local experts who have run that uh, school training program with Mandara. Also, Mandara is, is still uh, in business, and they're just off island. Um, so you can use those types of um, programs to create a baseline, okay. um, something more reasonable that spas could work on, okay. as well as massage facilities. Um, so there are those that are in the hotels and those that are outside the hotels. Okay, can, I, I'd like to, Ms. Rhodes, just a moment. I'd like to shift a little bit since we're on the topic of the spas and Ms. Rhodes said that there are higher requirements that spas have other than the health certificate. And so I understand you work at a spa. So yes. could you just share with us mm -hmm. the certification, the name of the certification and how many hours do you have? Uh, usually uh, for our new spa therapists, we'll have to train them at least 200 hours on, um, you know, like practice on the massage. And uh, because we're managing about 80 spas around the world, we have our own academy. Uh, we, we have our own academy in Thailand, Indonesia, in China. And then so that um, we also bring in our own trainer to train our spa therapists. And then uh, we, my other concern is also the language because uh, even though we have local hired, but some of them are Indonesian, Thai, we have Japanese therapists as well. So these, uh, these people are able to communicate in English, but in terms of learning all anatomy and everything in English and take the test in English, that will be really, really uh, difficult for them. Yeah. And you say that you fly someone in to train? Um, what what yes, is the for, certification that, mm -hmm. that is given after the training? This is, is it just one type of training or? Uh, for the trainer, we do have our own trainer, local trainer, mm -hmm. but of course, because we, we have to maintain the same standards for 80 spas around the world, we have our own trainer from academy. So they come in to oversee the training and also like refresh and retrain our spa therapists. And what's the name of the academy that you? Banyan Tree Academy. Can you spell that? B-A-N-Y-A-N-T-R-E-E. -E. Oh, Banyan yes. Tree, okay. So Banyan Tree and Ang Sana is actually the sister uh, companies. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Ms. Rhodes? Um, so I think that's really important is to consider 
place, right? And the number of employees and the different ethnicities. Although English is our spoken language, we have so many different ethnicities within even our workforce, but also who we have as our guests. And so we have to, uh, and so you have to consider where our employees may be coming from as well. Um, so I think we have to customize that a little bit. Um, still with the goal of reaching that eventually, um, but we have to start somewhere. Um, the other thing that uh, concerned me a little bit, and I did share this with the Allied Health Board, um, is prior to GHRA, I did work with, uh, in the medical field and insurance for a long time, and uh, we have to be careful with the words therapist, because massage therapy is completely different from a masseuse and a spa technician. Massage therapy requires somebody to really go out to school for a long time. And I remember Pat Pexa really shared this during her testimony of how many years she actually went to school. And I don't think that that's the expectation is that we're gonna end up with somebody in, in a massage therapy. There are only a very small number of spas here on Guam. Um, if you remember the one at PIC with Giovanna, uh, spa, they literally had massage therapists who have a four-year degree in it and certifications and they have to take a test, similar to like a nurse or, or anyone else to get to carry that title. So I think that we have to be very careful in using the word therapist and we should probably have uh, other definitions and other uses of what type of employees we have, like a spa technician or a masseuse. Uh, we have to downgrade it, I think, because to call everybody a massage therapist is a disservice to the medical field for somebody who actually goes to school for a really long time yes, and so, gets those qualifications. So in the bill we did uh, add... You added that? It, no, well, it has always been there. They have the definition for the therapist, the practitioner, uh, so we did Yeah, but we just have to be issues. careful. We're not always saying massage it's therapist. Not, the bill doesn't always say massage therapist. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying for our purposes. Um, so I think that... Uh, Going back to the Allied Health Board um, bill that was introduced by Senator Dennis Rodriguez, you will see just how more detailed it was with regards to not just the hours of training, but even for the enforcement and compliance and other things. And so I brought a copy with me. Um, I have it on a soft copy. I did scan it. Um, but it, it was, we worked on it for a, a long time. Um, and we did, you know, we had the same questions back then. Is the Allied Health Board willing to take this on? And at the time, uh, maybe was really pushing this with Alicia and wanting to make this happen. Um, but it still didn't get through the legislature because of, I think, the training requirements and the certification process. Um, so I think overall, uh, again, we have to separate the two things because you don't want to, again, put a black eye on the industry or those who work in the industry by calling everybody, uh, by putting, jumbling them together with those who actually have illegal acts going on with those, within those businesses. And um, I would recommend that we introduce two separate types of bills, one to handle the illegal acts and what you're going to do to control the industry more um, with regards to licensing and regular enforcement. Um, and you know, we're going through this same with public health on like the pools. I just had a public hearing, administrative public hearing with public health yesterday, and they have the same issues. So you have to understand that by introducing more regulations, does not mean that they're gonna do a better job in enforcing it. They're gonna have more challenges, especially with the mandated stuff. Um, that's always the case with every new rules and regs or new law that's implemented, is those agencies have to be able to follow through on their mandates, and public health today can't follow through. Um, they're supposed to like inspect the pools four times a year. Uh, same thing with the Guam Food Code. They're supposed to go out for it. They're trying to do at least once a year, if that. And they've really, I've been recognizing them um, for the last couple of years because they've added to their enforcement team. They've been going out regularly. Right now, I know that they're going out to the spas as well and uh, massage businesses um, to really check in on things. But I think my message there is that by adding more regulations does not again mean that public health is going to do a better job going out there. I think we're just really creating more of a problem for them. And so I think streamlining it and making it much easier um, to control the number of businesses who have licenses 
and then also having more requirements that are more basic rather than uh, going straight into this. This could be a long-term plan, and I'd be really interested in what GCC and other educational institutes have planned for the certification part portion, because I think that is the long-term plan, um, but you need to, uh, again, make it reasonable. Um, you're talking about the, work, the title massage therapy, we need to be careful. Are you saying that massage therapy the same as re the, the standards that we have today and then have different levels of uh, uh, mm -hmm. like a paraprofessional? Because let me just say that right now on, in the books of all the other um, discipline and the profession, there is a full-fledged person that is uh, license, and there's also some paraprofessionals like technicians. Right. So we wanted to make sure that we are uh, in uniform. So, the, so the, let's say massage therapists, right? They're the, the one that's licensed. And then there's massage therapy technician. Uh, they're the one under the supervision. Because I know in the past bills, we talk about a massage therapist, how many they can supervise at one uh, facility. I think that's important because then that will allow to have this industry to be broader rather than just confined. So if you have somebody, for example, I, I heard about um, uh, Pacific Island, they have a licensed massage therapist. Um, that person can supervise so many people who are technicians because it's not possible to have massage therapist every place because they're, they're, they're rare. I mean, they're not everybody. So then we should have sub-level of technicians, just like all the other professions we have, like physical therapist. We have physical therapists, but we also have physical therapist technician. Respiratory therapy, we also have technician. So maybe we have, have the different title, therefore you have different levels of people with education and, and, and uh, training and practice, you know, how they can practice. But I think for a, a facility, if you have um, a, the hire of massage a therapist, let's say therapist, then I think everybody else come in could be called technician and they could be under the supervision of somebody. Just like, you know, right now, speech and language, they have people call clinician, but they have to be supervised. On, you know, and then we also have a, a definition of an indirect direct, but I presume that in the facility, uh, the spa is a direct, not like I can be at Aganya and she can be down at in Iran, you know. But so, I, so I, th that, I that still think I agree with you, and that's why I'm asking that we have different levels. But I honestly don't feel it's it's kind of like Guam is so limited with the. You have to remember the way businesses operate. Guam, I don't think, can support like a massage therapist at every spa facility, massage parlor, if you want to use that word. It, that is not what they're selling. You have to remember that. So if you're wanting to limit that, it, it's kind of like how many cardiologists can we have on Guam? How many LPNs can a, a clinic have? An LPN uh, versus an RN. You, you can't, it's not that type of a medical field it's a service. It's not a medical requirement right now to have a massage therapist to be a supervisor at every facility. I, that's overreaching. I think Guam's too small of a market to really have all that. And you're really talking about uh, a therapist, a real therapist, licensed therapist, like a uh, physical therapy you mentioned, or radiology technician, right? There's different kinds of levels, and they go to schools and they get certifications at different levels. Good afternoon. Thank you very much uh, to Senator Nelson for uh, having this particular uh, roundtable discussion. I'd like to just perhaps um, share a perspective uh, when we talk about the, the public safety aspect of this. Um, it is very clear in many communities and all communities that if we're talking about public safety, keeping our communities uh, obviously uh, protected from criminal activity, uh, illegitimate activity, it really is a partnership amongst all stakeholders. 
and we repeatedly say over and over again, law enforcement cannot do this alone. So we do have to have the partnership between our private sector, our nonprofit, uh, and obviously our government sectors all coming together. So though I appreciate um, Mary Rhodes, uh, and we have worked together definitely on task forces and coalitions, the whole concept of a task force and coalition is to bring all the disciplines together, to have everyone have input into the process. And so when we're looking at this particular bill, law enforcement was reaching out to other parts of our community so that we can really work together and look at what we can do so that those illegitimate facilities, organizations, businesses are not in fact able to, uh, under the darkness and cloud of loopholes in our laws, and we have loopholes in our laws, that we're able to pass laws that are going to protect the community and protect the professionals who conduct legitimate business. Prior to 2009, moving forward, there have been numerous meetings and between uh, some of us here working together, Dr. Balahaja, Mary, and others, this has been an ongoing discussion for over 10 years and we still cannot pass a law. Um, please know that it was shocking to many people in our community when we found out that in order to open a, an establishment, and really, what do our establishments call themselves here? therapeutic massage establishments, massage parlors, though so those are very, are actually a much smaller number than the therapeutic, mas uh, therapeutic massage establishments. Um, we soon discovered with the Department of Public Health and Social Services that, uh, and, and Ms. Rhodes is right, the only requirement really is a health uh, and sanitary permit. And that's pretty much it. When we talk to legitimate professionals who have had some amount of training, they may or may not rise to the level of a massage therapist, but they are legitimate uh, professionals who are very proud of the work that they do, of the wellness and health programs that they put forward. Um, they're, in, they're, in, they're put into this situation where the industry is somehow uh, clouded by all of the other uh, businesses that come in illegitimately. And so when the, this piece of legislation and there were several uh, versions of it were, were put forward or introduced, a great part of it was to protect the legitimate, the legitimate uh, professionals because we need to. Uh, and, and so getting the legitimate professionals input was critical and so the, the work and the versions that you have seen over the years is a result of the input of the private government partnerships because we have to have it that way. Um, law enforcement can't just break into an establishment or can't, there are certain requirements, right? Constitutional protections. Uh, we know that regulatory agencies uh, through their mandates can be very powerful. And over the years, it has been uh, advocated that we need to empower our regulatory agencies so that they really do have uh, the ability to do their jobs. And if the only thing they have on their, on their records for standards for open, uh, opening some of these establishments or someone putting out a shingle is a health and safety permit, well, they've met the requirements and they're done. So what we're talking about are public health and public safety partnerships. That is what we're talking about. And, and in doing so, we are actually also assisting in the prevention of illegitimate and illegal activities. So please know that even the standards in, in earlier versions of the bill, how many training hours, I think everybody is open to, to, to listening and to implementing what the industry the legitimate industry wants to have done. Uh, the 200 hours that you spoke about by Banyan training, that's a lot of hours. And so everyone, uh, including I know Senator Nelson, um, is very, very open to doing what we can so that those standards are reasonable, they're achievable, and that they represent the legitimate practice that of professionals here on our island. 
because we want the industry to thrive. We want the industry to be successful, and at the same time, we want to make sure that the public health is obviously being protected uh, and that the public safety is also being promoted. And so that's a, the perspective that we have here, and we would not want to ever um, prevent a successful legitimate business from moving forward. And so, frankly, being interested more in the training, for example, and the standards, right, that Bunyan puts forward would be something to look at, uh, looking at the levels that uh, Mary Rhodes talked about, because I think we agreed in past discussions, massage therapist is a very specific term, so we need to look at other terminology, practitioner, technicians, whatever the appropriate technology is, and uh, I, all of you here that I see are the in, the, in a sense, the experts in the field, right? You know what the terminology is. You know what the, the training should be. So that's what this is about, is getting that information so that we can make sure whatever ultimately is passed so that the community is protected and we have that partnership, is, is, it reflects what you believe is also fair and reasonable and will allow legitimate practice to thrive also, right? Because it, uh, obviously it, it would have a very positive impact on our economy as well. Okay, so I just want to make sure that's clear. Uh, and definitely criminal enforcement is a separate matter in the sense that we have crimes on the books, we have crimes, we have severe penalties on the books. Uh, but that is also a very different system uh, that, and so we, it, it, this bill will also have some uh, deterrent impact and it will also allow uh, for the regulatory side to have more of a uh, you know, more of a, a position uh, in, in being able to ensure that uh, it's legal activity that is happening and not illegitimate, illegal activity. And the, the changes and the references, so that we're referring to spas as opposed to massage, all of that I think everyone is open to because we've got to make sure we are using the correct uh, terminology. Okay, thank you. I would just like to suggest that um, in the definitions, maybe the inspectors and the health safety be inserted and what their job is in the definitions, and that they will be ma playing a major role. And also, I, I believe when I was interviewing uh, some of the massage therapists a long time ago, I believe they have a national board, and they have standards under their national board, and I'm thinking that might be a good thing to look over their requirements. Um, and I'm going to skip over to um, to the exceptions. I really don't think A um, authorized to practice. I think A, B, and C should be removed. I believe in keeping the Surahanu because they were here before us. What page? <laughs> what, what page? That was uh, page 10. But I think A, B, and C really shouldn't be an exception. And that's all I have to say. And I, oh, I'd like to add maybe, um, maybe the cosmetology board would be a more appropriate board for them. I don't know. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so I have a question about, um, because anything that we add here, again, are new mandates. And so have you reached out to the Department of Public Health and Social Services? We are, we are talking with them, yes. But the... Now, just know that this is not final. We are here because the, there was a lot of concern, right? And so we want to address some of the concerns and work together to have something concrete. And if it means a completely different bill with different requirements as a stepping stone, uh, even minimal requirements, then just so that, like you said, perhaps this looks something long-term that we can implement. So. If we just scratch this whole thing out and start anew, let us do that. But let us start with something, no? Yeah, I would recommend that, um, again, we separate the bill. Just because I don't think you're going to get anywhere if you continue to uh, combine it and plague it with the 
illegal trafficking and, and although I think those things are really important, I think that's a separate discussion with DRT because as you know, we've been talking about short-term vacation rentals and that compliance department is extremely taxed and they've lost some people recently as due to retirement. And so this would be, um, to go after those illegal establishments requires not just the public official, I mean public safety officials with, they do a combined uh, immigration with uh, GPD and even GFD because they try to use fire codes as a reason to enter to. Um, but uh, DRT is a huge portion of that with the compliance side. Yes. But um, and that, again, it comes down to mandates, right? Yes, and that's a, that's at a lot. That, that's I think years ahead because that's usually the requirement of a facility. So there's no law requiring what a massage facility should be. But right now we want to address how we can work well with i think partners. that's your low-hanging fruit actually your low-hanging fruit is really the compliance on the illegal stuff because the that's already facility illegal. so yes. you want us to you're recommending that we introduce requirements for a massage facility i i think that's more immediate Other than, than the educational piece permit? because the educational piece okay, is going to take longer we can to implement that. and get the schools to create programs and come up with standards Okay, we can start at the massage facility. But we will still be discussing the certification requirements. It's, n it's not off the table. It's still on the table for discussion. Sure. And, and, and we have been researching, and that's what Dr. Balahaja was talking about earlier, was the facility requirements. And uh, we have been researching facility requirements also for uh, the island. And if I could just clarify, because the, the crimes uh, that may have some relevance to uh, an investigation of certain establishments and victims that may be there, I mean, we already have crimes on the books. So that is, so, so that is uh, there. So we're talking about certification and licensure. This particular bill is actually focused, as I understand it and see it, and the versions from years ago over the last 10 years have been focused on the certification and licensure part. What we're trying to do is say that there is this partnership, but there isn't, in, in other parts of the Allied Health Board laws, there are going to be, because it exists, some criminal penalties if people are not following their certification and licensure requirements, correct? I, we've seen it in other, in other disciplines and other professions, so that's not anything new. When we reference human trafficking or other or other types of criminal activity that might be uh, that might be found in certain establishments, uh, those laws are already on the books. There are already crimes that have been uh, that have been uh, enacted and and then also investigated, enforced through a criminal prosecution realm. This though, this particular piece of legislation in whatever version it ultimately ends up being with the input right from the community, um, what we're saying and what has been said in years past from a, uh, really from uh, a public safety standpoint is going to be helpful in, uh, in, in keeping our community safe. It just will be because when you have a situation where there are no standards at all, then it just is, you, you can, in other words, you can have on one end enforcement and criminal prosecution happening over here, but if on the other side, on the civil side, you have absolutely zero standards, and we have zero standards right now, really, anyone at this table, as far as I'm concerned, I can go open up an establishment. I just need to get my health and, and sanitary permit, and that's pretty much it. Where's the check? Where's the, where is the, the balance? Where's the regulation? We don't have anything. So the regulatory agencies themselves have said to us, they need more, uh, they need something else because they don't have any enforcement uh, power in, in, in many situations. If they don't have any standards to which, right, or requirements to which they can, they can, um, they can move forward on. And even, and that's why the Guam Allied Health Board is so important because we, if we're talking about professionals, power professionals in the health industry or related health industries, you, we have standards uh, for practice, for licensure and certification. So this is what the focus is in, in terms of these, uh, you know, these bills that have come over the past 
10, 11 years. I Thank think you. also a strong statement of ethics in here, and that would be from their national board too. Thank you. Uh, we have the room for like about 10 more minutes, and so if anyone would like to say anything, I think yeah. the GVP chair has been patiently waiting for his turn. <laughs> <laughs> As a GVB, um, you know, spa is part of a destination for, for an industry. So we have a resort destination, we got spa destination, and regulation is fine, and I, I believe that. And you're pursuing the illegal activity in certain location is a must that we need to kill, okay? But using this regulation, to make it harder for them to open an overnight massage parlor for illegal activity is, is gonna make the legitimate party more difficult because infrastructurally, the GCC is not ready, you're not ready, we don't have any structure, we don't have nobody, and already people who's working hard to make day-to-day -day livelihood for their family cannot operate already. So we gotta find a different, Avenue, how are we going to deregulate these overnight massage parlors? And that is, there's a lot of laws that make it very difficult to just break in, and, and it's, it's, you got to catch them in the act, basically, right? Um, and Jones Act or whatever, not Jones Act, what's that? There was another uh, um, regulation we had in Hawaii, you got to catch them in the act, you know? So, I know it's a difficult task, but I know by having this will make these overnight people harder to get licensed to open these activities, right? That's what this regulation is all about. I think the intent of this regulation is to make harder for this tra human trafficking to be, one. But next one is I know you want to have a safe, uh, your note was beginning, you want to have a safe, so that, okay. uh, safe. Perhaps the message was misunderstood, the primary concern is health and wellness. Okay. Right? Well, why, and suddenly, why suddenly why now after, if we didn't have this illegal activity in this mom and pop operation, we were doing okay. Okay, but But this is uh, not new legislation that has yeah, been tried but to be passed. The so thing it's not is, other ways to uh, once we have an infrastructure ready to license these people at the minimum price or free for people who can't afford okay, an accelerated course or something. Legitimate parties here, they have their own training course. They have their own seminar. They got all this thing. So uh, as a start, we can say, if you want to open a spa, submit your training manual or training schedule or whatever and see where we go from there. If you cannot submit that, sorry, I can't permit this business. Okay, you gotta like when we bring an intern, we gotta bring, we gotta have our own uh, immigration must see our training schedule. And if you don't have, sorry, you cannot because you're bringing free labor here, cheap labor. No, 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 no. So that could be a part of a compromise where bef until you come out with GCC or her entity or whatever has a legitimate class, enough teachers to and teach these people. We always have this regulation, we push, push it to get a regular, okay, now, who's gonna teach? Uh, sorry, I get only minimum wage or I have to raise my kids, I don't have why my one, um, you know, parent, I, I don't have time to go to school, uh, sorry, I gotta quit school. I, I gotta quit your, your establishment now, I gotta go wash my dish, I love, because I live on tips, right? These people live on tips too, right? So I, I know the intent, but we, I felt like we we're trying to commingle here with, with trying to regulate here so that we make it, it will work, it will make it very hard for this overnight massage parlor to open because you gotta have all this. And they're not gonna go and get all this, so they're not gonna do it. Then they go underground. Be careful, and in Hawaii they did that, and they went underground. And that made it harder for the uh, police to go look for them. All right, thank you. And, and, and just to reiterate I, 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 the- I, I went to your uh, trade on the- the, human tra the meetings yeah. on illegal trafficking, so I understand your- But just to make intent, it very yeah. clear, right? The concern is health and wellness, because there is no standard for massage therapists, 
uh, or technicians um, at all. There's no standard. And because there is no standard, that is what opens the door for a lot of the illicit places. And so really that's why we're all here as a community. And thank you for you know, adding some concrete input. Perhaps we should take a look at making them uh, initially starting off with uh, training requirements that the spas have in the hotel industry and see where we can go for there. Because we do want to make sure, because it is a health and wellness issue. Uh, you are dealing with the anatomy of the body. Uh, it's a, you know, you're dealing with, with the physiology of the body. So it is a medical issue. It's not, no longer a service of either being a waitress or a bartender. This is actually people's health and wellness that you are dealing with directly when you are touching the body, the body and, and applying different medical techniques in efforts to heal an individual of a certain symptom. I think uh, you wanted to. Um, I just like to um, discuss about uh, the page number six about the grandfather of licensure. Um, in here, it's saying like um, the individual who has been practicing the art of massage prior to the implementation of this act shall have 90 days on calendar um, day to apply on the board to be grandfather and allowed a license. So. Um, 90 days uh, is, is a very short period. And plus, when we discuss this with our spa therapist, who, who is, of course, licensed on our own with our own academy, um, that concern is that if they have to get licensed, how long and how much would it cost? Um, because we're talking about people who get paid either minimum wage or a little bit higher than minimum wage if they have to go like to to school full time and during that time for example if it's in Hawaii or in the states it takes them at least like six months to a year to get certifications and everything so it means that they have to take total time off from work no money no pay just to go to school get license um, the time and uh, the cost, and the cost is, it's, I'm not too sure how much we're looking at over here, but in the state, it's starting from at least $10,000. And so um, that, that, that is their concern, that big concern right now for, for our spa therapist. Yeah. Sorry, what's the that, that the cost, yeah, to, yeah, in school, in, in the states, yeah. Can I just add one quick thing? Uh, in addition to Sheraton, uh, we do have, in Hilton and Nico, we do have 280 hours of uh, trainings, right? But to do so, we are paying for them. Yeah. Even though we occupy in training, we, we doesn't generate any revenue for us, but we pay. But we're not doing like 280 hours straight. We do minimum of 50 or 60 hours for standards, and then, you know, the, the therapist start getting doing the service to actual, and then we are a time, find the time, spare time, to complete 280 hours. Some, pe some employees, you know, for part-time, they take maybe six months or one year, and some, you know, therapist takes two years, but we do have the trainings, right? The reason why we're doing this, because, of course, for business side, we are not making big money, Right in the hotel umbrella, we don't making any money, right? But as a destination, as Guam, we need a spa to uh, to assure the equality of a destination as a great destination for resort. We need a spa for sure, right? If we not we feeding for only money, I, you know I don't think we operate as a hotel operator, but we need a spa. That's why then our uh, reality side, our payroll percentage is more than 50 percent mm -hmm. so we are not making money but we still doing and that's a very important part and of course our employee is not making great money we want to give more but uh, that's a that's a limit we can do 
like a minimum wage, plus of course we pay commission. Of course, a lot of therapists want to explore a future, so they are thinking to go cosmetology school. But of course, cosmetology school requires 100, you know, uh, for for therapist. Uh, I think it's, it requires close to 700 hours, right? 700 hours. They they're gonna pay close to eight thousand dollar or nine thousand dollar. I think they can afford it. Too. So that's a reality. Could, all right. Um, just a couple more minutes. G GCC, do you want to comment on anything? Okay, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Um, so I'm nowhere near an expert in this topic. Just wanted to let you guys know, but um, I was reading a little bit of this, and I know it's, uh, it's, it's to establish certification and licensure, right? So from an academic standpoint, I appreciate some of the comments that um, Ms. Rhodes is that correct? Ms. Rhodes made down there. I understand the distinction from an academic standpoint in the use of the, the term therapy because um, some people, therapists, you know, they, they go to school for a long time, so I can appreciate those, those comments. Uh, but from an academic point of view, uh, GCC is ready to, you know, we want to work with you guys to see if we can uh, establish curriculum, certification, any type of training that that the community needs so that we can, we can all be on the same page, we can all get our, our people certified uh, to meet standards that are required here. I mean, we have a lot of certification trainings that we offer at the college, and we work with several government entities, you know, like techniques of alcohol management, you know, that's one example and so forth. But, um, you know, we, we, I hear a lot of, there's a lot of uh, different concerns that everybody has here. Uh, I think it's regulatory concerns and so forth. But on an academic point of, um, from an academic standpoint, you know, we want to work with you guys. So if we can have another round table, maybe sometime in the future, we, we can definitely bring up something. We've met with some people that flew in from the States who have uh, gone to a community college or a college and um, received a two year or four year degree in massage therapy. And there's definitely curriculum that are, and I hear your, you know, your concern, your concern about um, employees earning minimum wage, and and I mean, I've, I've been there before, you know, so uh, I can relate to that, those those scenarios. So we definitely GCC definitely wants to work with everybody, including uh, Senator Nelson, you know, and hopefully we can come up with something to uh, come to a consensus and see what we can do to provide the services to our community. Thank you. Let me just say that I, I think generally people don't like regulation. There is a reason for that. Um, the certification to make sure that the standards are there, make sure that the public is, provide, uh, is protected, that's my concern, being on the board. But a lot of people don't understand. The less regulation, the better. The reason why there's certification licensure is make sure that the training and education are comparable to the standard you set in the community. So this community need to say, what kind of standard do you want? Do you want anything like a potpourri, you know, everything goes? Right now, that's what it is. Anything goes. There's a lot of other profession and specialty that hasn't been regulated. And I know that we worked on this for a long time. And I, in fact, work with GCC on the medical... Uh, Technician. Medical... Yeah, the medical... What is it? Not medical... Uh, with the doctor's office, right? Um, we worked on that one too, and that needs to go. But I think that this one is uh, priority over the medical. Um, anyway, that's already written up, actually. Medical something, I forgot what it was. It's such a long time. We worked on so many things, and things need to start moving and move and get going, right? But I, I think a lot of people have to understand what it means to be to be regulated or get certification. All it means is that you set the bar higher and the standard for the community and you take pride because you have you know, all these standards and then you want to take care of unscrupulous people you know, who do the, the naughty things that there is a board to say, okay, there's a complaint, you come in, then the board takes care of it and then sanction either sanction or whatever is going to, and that's a legal matter go through the process. That's what the problem, but a lot of people may not understand what it means. Having a board regulating is not 
you know, a court system. It is to make sure that the front of it is make sure the public is protected. I keep repeating myself to people every time a board meeting, we are protecting the public. Thank you, Dr. Balahaja. Real, real, we'll real short. Okay. You know, one, one of the consensus that I suggest is like, for instance, to work as a masseur, you gotta go eight hours class, one day. And there you have a public health, you got the police, you got all the, everybody there saying, if you do this kind of act, you will go to jail. If you do this kind of type of when to protect yourself, you gotta do you know just a debriefing so they know what kind of field you're getting into, and 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 let them know what the law says. You know that's a compromise, but go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, no. Thank you for that because public awareness and education is definitely uh, important, especially in crime prevention. So that that is very important. I just wanted to make two brief comments. One is. We've heard uh, what sound like some very good uh, examples of training that are uh, required of professionals that work in your various hotels or, or business establishments. So the, the point we want to make with that, though, is that you do have standards. Your businesses on your own have said, we're not just going to put someone in our spa who has a health certificate and a sanitary permit and then go, right, with to a client. You, you have set those standards because you know the importance of making sure you have a healthy service, right, and one that's legal. So, we, so working with what you've put together is something, once again, that I think we all want to stress. We want to work with because you have this experience. Uh, and so I just wanted to make sure we were clear on that, right, that everyone is open to that input because you've set standards. And certainly in the 80 countries, I think, or 80... Uh, you talked about 80 branches or countries where Banyan has been involved. Again, Banyan has, whether it's complying with a jurisdictional set of standards or its own internal established standards, there are standards. We have zero on Guam, zero. That is scary. Um, uh, and maybe just to uh, one suggestion, Senator, is because already we have some good examples that have, and good suggestions and recommendations that have been made here that uh, maybe getting something that's written uh, as proposed uh, proposals in terms of training that also would be very helpful probably with the Guam Community College. Uh, that, and, and so that I think we can start. And then of course the education and awareness piece that, that is required as part of that training so that people do understand what the requirements are and where the line has been crossed if in fact we have someone who has a different view on what their intentions are, right? Thank I, you. Let me just add to that is that they already have standard Okay, what they can do is that a regulatory board, doesn't have to be Allied Health, a regulatory board can already look at the one they have, they submit it and take a look at and work with it instead of saying, well, you know, this has, it, it's, it's not a closing door thing just because you have regulatory boards. Is that how is it already have it and how can that be accepted? You know, that's what I'm talking about, being open about it. So we're, we're you know, they already have it. So take a look at it and see how that's going to be worked out and be able to pass it, right? And to give um, certification to that group already have it because there shouldn't be any problem. But I think, uh, like Alicia said, that we need to start somewhere. Uh, regulation is a bad word. People don't mm -hmm. like to be regulated. Mm -hmm. They don't like to follow laws. But I think that when you live in a community protecting the public, those things you must have. Well. I just want to close it out. I know she's trying to wrap it all up. Um, and I, I really have to say, um, the history of GHRA on Guam, it, we were created to serve as a government advocate and a private sector advocate and to serve as that medi medi uh, mediator to find common ground in all of this. And I am very proud to say, we, we don't always fight regulations. If you look at our history, especially in the 12 years I've been at JHRA, I've worked with, uh, especially Senator Rodriguez, a lot. Um, and so that's why, again, I'm really grateful that you did the round table because this is what we needed to really start, reset the conversation. Uh, because it has been too long, we've all been trying to do something, but I think it's just because it's muddied, 
right, between the things. And I think um, the thing we need to learn from is that with all the regulatory stuff that we've done in the past, GHRA has always worked well with the agencies when we come together to come find reasonable solutions for a small market. And that's what we always have to keep in mind, is we are a small market with limited resources, but also limited skill sets. We can certainly bring it, like what GCC does, but one of the mod mess models that we've applied to with the Guam Food Code, with the Responsible Alcohol Server Seller Act, with the health certificates, and even with our tour guide certification program, uh, with GBB, and then the last one is the pesticides, is we've always looked, the laws all state working with an education institute like GCC, or private sector nonprofits like Trades Academy or GHRA, because our model has always been to work with our educational institutes, but also have an option to have train the trainer courses so we can teach in-house, because that's really the preferred route with the private sector group is to bring in certified trainers in-house so it's already covered under our operational costs, especially with high turnover. And so I really want to make sure that, for example, all the trainer, trainers would go through like GCC, they would have two different level of courses, or it's something that a standard, standard plan could be approved. So we've gone through this many times before with other agencies, it's not really new. Um, and we've submitted plans, training plans, and also I'd like to remind everybody that Department of Labor has programs that we go through with the U.S. Registered Apprenticeship Program, which is taught at GCC and Trades Academy, and GHRA has been a sponsor since 1986, so we're not afraid of regulations, actually. We're an, agent, we're an organization that really works with the government. Uh, really with regards to this specifically, this is our specialization, if you will, and our whole purpose as an organization. So we could certainly share with you uh, the old Mandara Spa, and I don't know, some of it might be proprietary, I would think, um, of what makes them unique, but we can standardize them uh, and genericize them so that we can share it of what, like common, maybe we could do it in an aggregate form of what are the common things that they do for each level uh, because they, we have to, again, remember it has to be levels, like an introductory course, you know, a 50-hour course, and up to 200. Because the other thing you want to do is not scare everybody away from it, from having to go back to school. But you want to do um, what DOL always calls is uh, the lattice, which is like a ladder for them to work in the industry to stay long term so that they get paid more. They also have supervisory opportunities and management by getting more certification later on with continuing credits. Yes. That, thank you, Ms. Rhodes. And so in our future discussion, uh, we'll, we'll focus more on the educational aspect. And then uh, we'll also look at the masseuse facility and we'll bring that up. We, yes, we already had some re additional research. But also, um, just to close it, you know, if, if we have to start anew, then let's start anew. And I think that's where we're headed. But we must also ensure that the industry is protected and that the, the like for example, the banyan, the banyan tree that you, the certification and the courses that are given, uh, perhaps that can be inputted as um, uh, a comparable certification, right? just to initiate this. And then the apprenticeship program. There are apprenticeship programs for construction, for development that allow some tax credit. Perhaps we can look at this avenue as well. So that would, that's what we would discuss in the future meeting. And then also, as the GVB chair recommended, perhaps a, a training model, right, to be looked as a standard that the, industry, the hotel industry uses for, for the spas. Yeah, as GBP, we want a safe environment for everybody, tourists especially, because that's the only income we have for Guam, uh, tourism. So, you know, we're, we're here to work together, but let's not make it difficult for the, for the people who want to go into that trade cannot be on that t trade business. So, you know, are we going to have this kind of discussion again before you draw up something final? <laughs> Yes, this is, we, I think we're going to go in a completely new direction now. So let, let's sit down right. again. And I think so it was a very rewarding, something. and yes. thank you very much for having this thank meeting. You. So I think we should do this again. So at least you understand where it's coming from, the people who is in that industry, mm -hmm. and especially from, uh, let me go to tell us what's the legal side of the, 
uh, headache that she has in, in the past with the illegal activity too. You know, it's something that we should be aware of too. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you very much and thank you all for attending. Uh, it was a very informal meeting and we just wanted to make sure we had this for documentation and for the record. Thank you very much. Thank you.